Welcome to France 2022, the campaign. It is our daily show covering the presidential election. Six days to go before round one. With the finishing line now clearly in sight, all candidates hit the campaign trail this weekend, hoping to sway undecided voters their way. Shirley Sitbon has the recap. It's a scene that would have been unthinkable a few weeks back. Nicolas Sarkozy. The former French president was booed by voters of his own party, this because he failed to back the Republicans' candidate Valérie Pécresse, who is struggling in polls. Officially, she's not taking issue. Nous sommes les seuls héritiers du général de Gaulle. De Jacques Chirac, de Nicolas Sarkozy, la droite, Emmanuel Macron, Marine Le Pen, Éric Zemmour en sont les faussaires. Nous en sommes nous les légataires. This is the leader Nicolas Sarkozy has been cozying up with, President Emmanuel Macron. For him, though, the main target now is not the mainstream right, but the far end of the right. C'est le combat du progrès. Contre le repli, le combat du patriotisme et de l'Europe contre les nationalistes. Macron had his crowd, Jean-Luc Mélenchon got his in Toulouse, where once again he criticized the president for using private consultant groups. J'estime que le nombre d'articles de presse sur McKinsey est suffisant pour qu'une enquête préliminaire soit engagée et nous la proposerons. In this campaign, the far left has stepped over the environmentalist platform, eating up a chunk of their electorate. C'est quoi l'essentiel? C'est le climat, c'est la santé, c'est les services publics, c'est la justice sociale, c'est le pouvoir d'achat, et que le vote efficace, c'est le vote écolo pour ça. The game isn't over yet. That is what Eric Zemmour believes, although he was forced to end his game this weekend when he tried to look like a fun guy. That was before the owner of the field kicked him out. He is more of a rugby kind of guy. This weekend, Jean Lassalle pleaded for peace and harmony. Elle ne cherche pas forcément à être extrême droitisée. Elle ne cherche pas à être extreme gauchisé. Elle ne cherche pas à être extrêmement chronisée. Elle cherche tout simplement à se réunir et à se rassembler. Far from peace and unity, Nathalie Arto and Philippe Poutou say it's time to revolt. The two anti-capitalists used one of their last opportunities to snipe at their rivals. Les travailleurs qui voteraient Le Pen ou Zemmour pour écarter Macron se tirerait une balle dans le pied. Sur le fond, Zemmour et Le Pen sont exactement pareils, tels les frères Bogdanov de la politique. Macron, euh, 65 ans à la retraite. Vieille idée de droite, hein, hein, cette idée que finalement, parce que l'espérance de vie augmente, eh bien, euh, au cas où on serait chier à la retraite à ne pas travailler, eh bien, il faut travailler plus longtemps. That is all from the campaign trail. Meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. Okay, so that's uh, a roundup. Let's take a look at how uh, the candidates are doing in the polls. A new survey out by IFOP Fiducial, Mark. Uh, it's out this Monday. What does it show us? It shows that Emmanuel Macron is still ahead, 27.5% of the votes. Uh, back in 2017, he scored 24% in round one. Marine Le Pen is still on the rise, 22%. This is her highest score since January the 10th on this uh, survey, and it's above what she scored back in 2017, it was 21.3 percent. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the far-left candidate, 15.5 percent, still rising, but well below the 19.5 percent he garnered back in 2017. The conservative candidate, uh, Valérie Pécresse, 10 percent. This is half of what the conservative candidate scored back in 2017. The other far-right candidate, Éric Zemmour, didn't run in 2017, but he's now at 10 percent. Uh, he's been declining uh, steadily uh, for the past few days and weeks, actually.
Okay, so that's round one. What would happen, uh, according to the pollsters, in round two? Yes, uh, Macron would win against Marine Le Pen, 53% versus 47%. Back in 2017, it was 64% versus uh, 36%. So the race is becoming tighter and tighter. Okay, now one party you haven't uh, said very much about, Mark, was the Socialist Party. Uh, and 10 years ago, the Socialists were the dominant party in France. Absolutely. They had all the levers of uh, powers in their hands. The presidency, majority in parliament, most regions in France. A decade later, the party is headed for its worst performance ever in a presidential election. The candidate, Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo, is polling at 2%. Maya Anaïs Yatagen and Fadil Bayat attended her last campaign event in Paris to try to understand whatever happened to the PS as it's known here in France. Anne Hidalgo enters the ring, ready to fight for a surprise comeback. A few high-ranking socialists appear at her side, but the mainstream left's candidate is the only one to address the crowd. Les congés payés en 1936, la section syndicale d'entreprise, c'est nous Qui a créé les comités d'entreprise, fondé la sécurité sociale, étendu encore les droits des travailleurs, c'est nous Memories from a bright past, when the left was in charge. Quand on connaît la qualité des propositions qu'elle porte par rapport à ce qui est prédit, il euh, y a un décalage euh, important euh, qui est euh, fondamentalement injuste. Quand même, aux dernières régionales, le PS a quand même fait euh, un bon pourcentage. Et je ne comprends pas qu'elle qu en est à 2%. C'est incompréhensible. Moi, je n'y crois pas. Non, pas Mélenchon. Ben non, parce que Mélenchon, il, il, a, bon, il y a des, des idées qui sont, qui sont oui, séduisantes. Mais elles ne peuvent pas être appliquées. Alors, ça sert à quoi Rien du tout. Militants are in disbelief as they remember that just 10 years ago they were celebrating the victory of François Hollande. Since then, the party's centrist core has been swallowed in 2017 by Emmanuel Macron. Then candidate Benoît Hamon got knocked out in round one with just 6% of the vote. J'ai échoué à déjouer le désastre qui s'annonçait depuis plusieurs mois et peut-être plusieurs années. A terrible score that plunged the Socialist Party into financial crisis. Now, Anne Hidalgo is just hoping to meet the five-person threshold to get her campaign expenses reimbursed. A dire situation that prompted party officials to call for an urgent recomposition of the left. Je ne souhaite pas une guerre des clans, moi je souhaite au contraire qu'on puisse rassembler la gauche. Je le dis depuis 4 ans. La gauche, quand elle est divisée, eh bien elle ne gagne pas. Les hommes peuvent passer, les choses peuvent être différentes, mais euh, la social-démocratie française a fait beaucoup pour ce pays et elle va continuer. And one man could use the situation to make his comeback, François Hollande. The former president has backed Anne Hidalgo a few weeks ago, while adding that he would like to help rebuild the left. Okay, well, we're joined here in the studio by our business editor, Kate Moody. Hi there, Kate. Hi, Tom. Kate, uh, the cost of living uh, is really uh, the number one issue uh, when you poll uh, the French uh, people. Uh, talk us through uh, this issue during this campaign. Well, inflation, Mark, is at its highest level in years across much of Europe, really. Uh, in the Eurozone, it's at about 7.5% in March. That's a record high. In France, consumer prices rose 5.1% in March. Uh, that's according to the harmonized EU data. So it's less than Germany's 7.3% or Spain's nearly 10%, but still the highest level since 1997. As you can see, it was driven by a nearly 30% increase in the cost of energy. Uh, that's partly linked, of course, to the war in Ukraine. Food prices, though, were also nearly 3% higher than they were this time a year earlier. Concretely, what that means for French households and why it matters to prospective voters is that every time they go to the grocery store, try to fill up their tank with petrol, uh, pay their heating bills at the end of the month, it is costing a little bit or sometimes a lot more. Uh, and salaries are not rising at nearly the same pace. Okay, so households feeling the squeeze. 
life is getting more expensive for everybody. What are the candidates proposing to do about it? Well, there are a lot of ways of dealing with inflation. One of the main things that we usually talk about is interest rates, and that's something that's sent by the European Central Bank, so not something that a French president or candidate uh, has any direct say over. Instead, what they can do is try to control taxes or the price of goods, uh, or they can try and boost people's spending power uh, with higher salaries. We're seeing most candidates proposing a mix of those two strategies on their campaign platform. Platforms. Uh, as President Emmanuel Macron has capped price increases for gas and electricity bills, he's offered an energy subsidy for low-income households. As a candidate, he's mostly focused on lowering taxes for households and businesses. Uh, so too is the conservative Valérie Pécresse. She's vowed to boost private sector salaries by about 10 percent over a prospective five-year term. Uh, now, the far-right Marine Le Pen says she would temporarily get rid of sales tax on about 100 essential goods. And she would lower VAT on petrol from its current 20% to 5.5%. And as you can see here, half of the 12 candidates who are still in the race there have said that they would indeed support uh, lowering that tax on petrol as a way of making it more affordable for French drivers. Uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the far left hasn't supported that tax proposal, but he has said that he would freeze the price of petrol and other essential goods as this cost of living crisis continues. Another big and controversial issue is uh, the reform of the pension uh, system in France. Governments have tried for years. Emmanuel Macron tried and failed during his first uh, mandate. Uh, what are the candidates saying on this very sensitive issue? Well, as you say, it was one of the central issues on Macron's election campaign five years ago. He had to abandon most of those reforms uh, because of the pandemic and huge protests. Now, France currently has 42 separate pension schemes for different sectors. Each of them have different requirements, different benefits. Benefits. Uh, the standard retirement age in France is now 62. Uh, Macron, Zemmour and Pécresse are all campaigning on promises of raising that age. Uh, four of the left-leaning candidates, you can see there in red, want to lower the retirement age. Marine Le Pen has outlined a rather complex system that would rely on when someone has entered the workforce. Uh, there are also different proposals about how much retirees should be able to claim. Le Pen wants to link pension pay payments uh, to the rate of inflation. Pécresse would link it to the minimum wage. Mélenchon and the Green Party's Yannick Jadot each want a fixed monthly rate for pensioners. Uh, the French system has been in deficit for years. In 2021, the two basic funds for private sector workers spent 2.6 billion euros more uh, than they took in. And there is concern across the board about how this system can stay afloat for future generations as people live longer. It's why pension reform comes back year after year as a big issue on the French campaign trail. Uh, I do want to say that you can take a closer look at some of these economic issues for this year's election uh, in a special series on people and profit. We've done three shows uh, delving into some of those economic issues, and they're available on the France 24 website now. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you very much indeed, Kate, our business editor. Um, shall we end on a lighter note, Mark? Why not? <laughs> we're going to end on a lighter note. Kate was just uh, talking about retirement. Uh, well, we'll all get there eventually, uh, since we're getting older, you, me, everybody. Uh, but presidents tend to age much quicker than the rest of us. If you don't believe me, just look at the pictures of French presidents at the onset of their presidency and at the end of their mandate. So you have Jacques Chirac. Iraq, you have Nicolas Sarkozy, you have François Hollande, and of course, you have Emmanuel uh, Macron. However, Macron still wants uh, to run again for a president, despite the risk of getting older much quicker. Okay, well, there we are. It's a matter of time before age catches up with all of us, Mark. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that's it for this edition of France 22, the France 2022, the campaign. Do join us again, same time tomorrow, 8.15 p.m. Paris time, right here on France 24.